Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And today, we are starting with Wandale Robinson. The 5'8", 178-pound wide receiver entering his second year was a second-round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. Justin, Joe Shane said he's going to be off pup by this time. I do expect it before the season. He is on pup because he's tore his ACL on the same play he became the Giants' only wide rec- only player to have a hundred yard receiving game in the regular season last year. Wandale was a huge investment, Justin. He's a talented player, but with his injury and the Giants' new additions, it feels like he's kind of getting lost in the shuffle. Lost in the shuffle, outside looking in. Um, all those kind of phrases definitely do qualify for Wandale Robinson right now um, because. We have a player who you're relying on his shiftiness. You're relying on his yards after the catch ability. You're relying on his speed. You're relying on his quickness. Yet he's coming off a torn ACL that happened in the middle of the season. And as we all know, we know it with Saquon Barkley. We know it. Hey, if you're a fantasy football guy, you know this. It kind of takes you two years to fully recover from that torn ACL. And Wanda Robinson was already a curious pick to begin with. I still think he serves value to this to this Giants team, and, and we'll talk about exactly how. But again, a player that you're relying on his quickness and his shiftiness and the speed, and it may not be, he may not fully be back to full health this year when we're relying on that. And I, I know we, we're going to, we got to get into, I guess we could save this for projection, but I want to talk about like Paris Campbell and, and the dynamic of those two guys being on the team at the same time. But let's just talk about Wandale as a player. Last year in six games, he had 23 catches, 227 yards, and a touchdown on a 74.2% catch rate. Was well, coming off of a year at Kentucky where he you know led, led the SEC in receiving over 1,300 yards, which just hit me. We had the last two SEC receiving leaders and and Juan Dale and Hyatt was second on the team in yards per route run last year to Darius Slayton. So when he was on the on the field, he was being used, but he also had the lowest average depth of target on the team for wide receivers on a team that had an extremely low average depth of target. So he got a lot of manufactured touches at or behind the line of scrimmage. But I do think he gave you more valuable, more he gives you more value than the traditional sl, you know slot only guy. But also he needs to get better at the slot only guy stuff. Uh, Justin. Yeah, like I think they want him to be like Cole Beasley, but Wando Robinson. Like more athletic Cole Beasley. A more athletic Cole Beasley. Uh, Wando Robinson in the athletic department is, is already there, but Wando Robinson in the route running department, like Cole Beasley and kind of getting open, finding space, that is the area in which he needs to grow the most. But what, what Wando Robinson was last year, and I think even what he is right now, kind of used as an extension of the run game. I think that's a valuable role. And I think it would have been more valuable as the year went on when the Giants, you know, stopped pounding Saquon Barkley into the ground and they started utilizing the quick game on early downs. Wanda Robinson would have been would have been really valuable in that. And he and he's starting and he was starting to become more valuable in that. And especially you saw that in the Lions game. Uh, here's a cherry picking stat. You want a cherry picking stat for Wanda Robinson? Cherry pick. He was one of 25 wide receivers in the NFL last year with the minimum of 20 catches, an average depth of target greater than six, and yards after the catch per reception, greater than five. Um, who w- There was one other Giants wide receiver that was in this, uh, that was that qualifies in this category. Who was that receiver? Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton. Now, the difference between Darius Slayton and Wanda Robinson, uh, Darius Slayton basically uh, averaged more yak and on double the average depth of target. So out of these 25 wide receivers in this category, Wanda was 24th in average depth of target, and only 14th in yards after the catch per reception. So he doesn't qualify for enough targets to really get like advanced yards after the catch number. So I can't really say if Wandale was better or worse than expected for Yak. But that is an area where if his average depth of target is going to be so small, I do want Wandale maybe breaking some more tackles, missing, you know, making guys miss a little bit more often. Um, and creating a little bit more in the yards after the ca- yards after catch category this year. Yeah, he was very much like a catch it in space and just kind of get up field, and he has speed to like beat guys to the sideline. But yeah, he wasn't juking guys out of their shoes or anything, and creating like that extra five to seven yards that is just pure athleticism, doesn't. So yeah, he got a lot of manufactured touches. But here is something where he did provide more than your typical five foot eight slot wide receiver. On third down and long, 
he has the athleticism to go and win on routes. Can I like, tell you my favorite play? Do it. The whip route he ran on a third and 12 versus the Ravens over Kyle Hamilton. That was sick. Yeah, and then there was like a bunch of basic in routes that, you know, were 12 to 15 yards. I even had like his one drop on third down was on one of those. And like that's where versus nickel corners playing man coverage on third and longs, Juan Dale's able to separate versus those guys at the stem when he's able to use his athleticism and work leverage down the field. And he can also, even though he wasn't using this, he can separate deep down the field on, you know, going up the seams, going across the field. Obviously, the Giants didn't utilize him a ton on that. I know Daniel Jones missed him on one of those throws where he was rolling out of the pocket. But so he has the athleticism to do more than normal slot things like his cuts are really good and sets guys up with leverage going into the cut. And like I said, I can he can test safeties on deep crossers and posts to where he has to be respected. And that allows him to win on those in routes, even though his route running needs to be cleaned up. So it's like on those. Those third and like longs, that's where Wandale is kind of above average uh, when you think of the slot only type guys. But where he struggles, Justin, is on the stuff that like Cole, like Cole Beasley should be this guy's coach because those are the things that Wandale needs to get better at. Like he needs to study Cole Beasley on how to separate on these quick game things because his routes are very raw in the quick game. He doesn't work leverage or route sell at all in those because it's not just based off pure athleticism. It's about having these great releases and get it, keeping the right uh, you know amount of space in between you and the corner before breaking and setting them up. Those are the little nuanced things that Wanda has to get better at. The frustrating thing is he's been working to get back from a torn ACL and not working on right. getting better at those things. So that's why I'm not expecting him to be able to fill that role. Even if he comes back this year, I still view him as like a get him the space uh, hopefully he can still target. do some of the deep stuff, but I don't think he's going to be able to be like your third and four, like throw run an option. Right? Yeah, he can get open on those things, but he's not going to be like a, a technician where you can just trust and a hundred percent. Hey, I could just I could just put my eyes on you because you're going to get open whichever way you break. Right, right. So that's why it's unfortunate. But I'm like I'm circling 2024. Wandell Robinson as being like, all right. You finally had an off season to get better as a receiver, get stronger, get faster, you know, do do whatever and not rehab your knee because that's what this off season has kind of been basically spent on, which is which is unfortunate for him. So, yeah, I mean it's interesting that you that you know third and longs um it, the the obvious manufactured stuff and using Wondell Robinson as an extension of the run game, it it's already there. Um even getting him some work in the red zone and and some short area stuff, it it's there. I mean, think back to that Ravens touchdown trips left where he's in the slot, two wide receivers to the left of him, basically crash down towards him and the corner that's kind of covering him, setting as like a pseudo pick. And then he runs like a quick little out route. That was the touchdown versus the Ravens. And then I even think the next week versus Jacksonville, they ran that same play and Wandale was able to get some yards after the catch up that left sideline. So that's where Wandale Robinson was effective in college with the, a lot of the manufactured stuff. Um, it's where he was, you know, when he was effective. A lot of that stuff is where he was effective last year. I think it's going to be the same, this relatively the the same this year. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about his role this year and future. Paris Campbell is the starting slot wide receiver. Yeah, and the first guy off the bench to just play wide receiver is going to be Jalen Hyatt, and then you also have Sterling Shepard. If Paris Campbell has a really solid year, do you think, and and Wandale's, you know, doing the, basically like similar stuff that he did last year, but not very much volume. Do you think this team views Paris Campbell as a one-year buffer zone to give Wandale time to get back while also still competing and would not really put a premium on bringing Paris Campbell back because they invested so much into Wandale or would they kind of swallow the second round pick and be like, Hey, we, we want to keep Paris Campbell because I think they're pretty similar players, but yeah. Paris Campbell is like, as far as prospects, I like Paris Campbell a lot more. He's I think he's a similar, I think he's uh, at least coming out of college was more athletic than Wandale. Better yak guy outside, inside versatility. Wandale Robinson's not an outside receiver. Yeah. Like I think, and, 
the stuff that Wandale needs to get better at is also the same stuff that Paris needs to get better at, like separating versus man coverage in the quick game type stuff. Like when you talk about him, it's very similar, but Paris Campbell, I think, is bigger and, like you said, has that outside inside versatility, doesn't have the shortest arms in NFL draft history. So I, I just would be very curious to see how they would approach that situation. I mean, I almost feel like it's going to come down to who plays more games and who's more reliable. Because both of these players kind of have, you know, Wanda Robinson tearing his ACL and being so small. Can you kind of survive like that at the NFL level? Paris Campbell, he played over half of his games played in his NFL career. And he's been in the league since like, what, 2017, 2018? You know, half 2019. of 2019, you know, half the games that he's played in his entire career came last year. So it's almost going to come down to who who is more reliable and who is more available for this Giants team. That's yeah. what I thought. And, and I didn't and, mention Cole Beasley either in that too, which is like, and is Paris Campbell going to reach? Because his his contract is very incentive heavy. Is Cole Be- is um Paris Campbell going to reach those incentives that are in this contract? Yeah, and the Giants built this wide receiver room, like in case of, like in case of injury, and I think Juan Dale's like playing time kind of bets on guys being injured, you yeah. know, which is like a I mean, safe I, bet I, when you think of look at the Giants wide receiver room, but like. That is kind of like, that's how they built this wide receiver room. We've yet to have that injury three weeks in the camp, thank God. But for one Dale's sake, he's like, hopefully, you know, he's probably personally like, I, I just want to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking, I, I want to I wanna pull this up. There was a few games where Wando Robinson got over 30 snaps. And there was, let me see here. One. Two, three, three games where Wandell Robinson got over 30 snaps. Two of those games, it was the six receptions, seven targets, 50 yards against Jacksonville, and then the nine receptions, 13 targets, 100 yard game versus uh versus Detroit. So when Wandell got the opportunities and Wandell got the snaps, you know, he he was effective from a catches and yards standpoint. And then the games that you know he kind of came in here sparingly here and there, you know, 20 snaps, 11 snaps. It was mostly the the manufactured stuff, and that's what I honestly think it's going to be again this year. There, there may be some games where, hey, this is a Wanda Robinson game. This is a quick game. We want to get the ball out of Daniel Jones's hands quick and fast, and Wanda Robinson's going to get yards after the catch. And then there's going to be some weeks where, you know, he he may not see a lot of action because it's Paris Campbell, Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton, and everybody else getting in there. So Sterling Shepard, Jason, why don't you talk about Manscaped yeah. before we talk about Jason Pinnell, Jason? Yeah, Jason, this is true. Um, there's a running running joke that I'm being called Jason by probably only one person on YouTube. With three accounts. Three accounts. Today's show, today's PP is, bro- is brought to you by Manscaped. Bob, this ad read is for you because the Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. And Bob, you deserve it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite, elite Products that includes the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, my favorite, the ultra premium body wash, two in one shampoo and conditioner, deodorant, and so much more. The Platinum Package 4.0, they got you covered from all the bases, head to toe, and hair to ball fro. I even heard some great things about their beard kit as well. Gave that to a friend recently. He thanks me every time I see him. Get 20% off and free shipping with code Giants at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code. Giants use a platinum package because the gold standard, Bobby Skinner, it's no longer good enough. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Let's talk about Jason Pinnock, a six foot, 205 pound, 24 year old safety. But he wasn't always that, Justin. He was an athletic fifth round cornerback in the 2021 draft, brought in by the New York Jets. Then, last cut down day, the Jets waved him and the Giants swooped up and got him. Started five games when McKinney went down and now is in line to be a full-time starter, which sounds good, but it's like, we we don't know what this guy's like in a full-time safety role. And because one, it's like, this is only his third year playing safety in the NFL. And one year was as like a truly backup special teamer with the New York Jets. And last year was joining a new team that runs a very different type of defense in Wink Martindale. So... I, I think there's like Jason Pinnock has like he's he has the athleticism to be an NFL player, Justin. 
Yeah. We talked about it last year. I even did a breakdown on him for the way he's the only waiver claim I did a, a breakdown on. We did a podcast on it about there is 100% good starting NFL athleticism here. It's just about figuring it out at the safety position for Pinnock. Yeah, I am really glad that the Giants claimed Jason Pinnock. Uh, I was really excited when we got him. And now I'm even more excited heading into year two with Jason Pinnock, an explosive athlete. And I have some of the numbers here. 98th percentile, 10-yard split, 87th, 87th percentile wingspan, 84th percentile broad jump, and 86th percentile vertical jump. Jason Pinnock was on the let's get more athletic, let's get fast train before the Giants were really fully on it themselves. And Pinnock played 459 snaps last year. That was 49% of the snaps he was eligible to play in. He played, and Bobby, he didn't even fully play until week 10 where, you know, Julian Love, Kenny went and, down and then and after Xavier, Bellin. Yeah. So he, he didn't even fully play till week 10. And I, you know, I, even last year, I remember like, I kind of think Jason Pennock should be, should be out there playing and then thrown into the fire against Houston has a good game against Houston. He had like a, a sack and a half against Houston had like four pressures, which was, which was crazy. And then I, I think it's two best games of the entire year were both games against Washington um, did allow a big play. Sunday Night Football in Washington, but also made some pass pass breakups and pass deflections and stuff like that. I really like Jason Pinnock, and I agree with you that the more comfortable he's getting with the safety position, the better that's going to be. And also, the more comfortable he gets with Xavier McKinney. Hopefully, the 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 two of them will complement each other well. And that's the other thing is we haven't seen him play. He's played the McKinney role, even though it's not obviously it's tailored to Pinnock playing instead of McKinney. But now we're going to see them play together. Last year, he played deep 67% of the time in the box, 26%, and then at corner at 7%. So I want to talk about deep to start because that's where he's played mostly. And this is where it's like he is a new safety because to me, Justin, I think he's just kind of a step late, like just pretty consistently from the deep safety spot. And he is someone who like a wide receiver is able to influence to, you know, widen this track, get his hips turned and just, just again, wide receivers are able to influence him to set up their breaks. And he has all the athleticism in the world, but he's just not great at IDing the past concepts and doing that stuff. Cause there was, I mean, there was plenty of, there was t- times where we were doubling good wide receivers and part of that double was Jason Pinnock, but they were still completing big chunk plays because yeah. Pinnock was just like, he was just kind of, you know, widening, widening from his alignment and they were setting him up for like Justin Jefferson. I know had a poster. I think Terry McLaurin had the same exact thing in the yeah, Washington there was sixty-five game. yard completion. Yeah, yeah. So there was there's just like he's got really got to figure out the safety position. But the hope with Pinnock is, well, he is still really new to playing the safety position, and there's a reason why they claimed him, and there's a reason why he was the one waiver last year on a team that had like five waivers. We're like, hey, there might be something here with this guy, but you got to give it some time. Yeah, for sure. He's a guy who can blitz. He can play the run. He can be physical. You know, and I even I do want to talk about blitzes and the run and stuff like that, too. Yeah, but I mean, I even think you see the physicality by the way that he runs around the field. He's a hard hitter. You know, I, I it's, evaluating safeties isn't like one of my strong suits, but I, it, it just feels like the more comfortable that Jason Pennock gets with the safety position. And I also think it matters of like this coaching staff getting to know his strengths and weaknesses as well. How much can we test you? How much can we put on your plate? What can we ask you to do that will lead to success for us? I think the coaching staff is getting to know him more too, and he's getting to know himself as a safety um, next to Xavier McKinney. So I think it'll it'll look pretty good this year, I hope. Out of safeties last year, Justin, he had the second most pass rush snaps in the NFL. Really? In the NFL. And he didn't start the full season. So if you think about that, I'm like they and they used him, you know, blitzing out of the box. They also, on those third downs, they would line him up at cornerback and have him blitz from that corner spot. And you'd see him just scream off the line of scrimmage from there. And on those 43 pass rush snaps that he had, he had two sacks, two QB hits, and six pressures. So it was 18th of 47 safeties in pass rush production. Had the fifth, mo- like as, as far as like a, on a per snap basis, and then just had the fifth most of like sacks, pressures, and hits in the NFL. And again, he only started five games. So that's the thing. You think of a, for- a corner's moving to safety, right? And you don't think of oh, he's physical. Like to me, 
he's a lot more of a physical player than Dane Belton, who has you know played that safety role a lot more. Agreed. Like and actually probably plays and plays down towards the line of scrimmage more than Jason Pinnock does. But he, like you said, he's fast and he's explosive and he likes to hit. I think he's a good tackler. And even the Jets, when he played with the Jets. He did that role very little, but when he did do it, I thought he played it really well, and I even put it in the film breakdown of him last offseason of like, hey, he doesn't do this much, but I think he's very capable of doing this, and he's just – he is truly a versatile safety with his athleticism and strength. Uh, it's just, like we said at the top, it's truly about figuring out about the mental game of – mental part of playing safety, which is the always – if there is one position in the NFL, besides quarterback, that it really is more about – your mental ability, like ability to understand the game and decipher and read stuff more than your athleticism, it is safety because you can have a four six safety who plays ten times faster than a four three eight safety. Like it's just because it's such it's a play where you're preventing or you're trying to create plays, and it truly is about being a step ahead because that tr- that makes the difference between the worst safety play in a game or the best, you know, or an interception. Like it's literally the difference between 35, 45 yard touchdowns and interceptions. He took a total of 118 snaps in the box last year. I'm counting that, you know, PFF has 37 snaps on the D line, 81 snaps in the box. So I added that up. That's 118. He had 309 snaps at free safety. And again, he mostly kind of came in here when Xavier McKinney went down and he, and he took over that the McKinney responsibilities. Do we think he's going to have more box snaps this year? Absolutely. I think it's a guarantee. And he I played agree. there 26% of the time last year. I, I think it's a guarantee that he plays more deep or more. I think it's probably like 44. I think it's going to be a pretty even split. Because I think they're going to try and do some more too say too high stuff this year, but at the end of the day, Wink wants his guys down. Now the nice thing with Pinnock and McKinney is you can both of those guys are capable of doing both. Yeah. So I do think there's going to be some role rotation, but yeah, I I think he's going to if he will have more box reps than Xavier McKinney will. And we've kind of seen that in practices too. Right, we have. Any um, how do you feel about him in man coverage? We really haven't seen it much. I know. I know. Like he's had a, he's but he had a, is a, he is a former corner, but he, like when he was put in those situations with the jets, it what it didn't look great. Okay. And that's something I'm keeping my eye out too. Cause you mentioned like, like I have the two areas which I think he needs to grow the most is not getting beat deep and letting guys behind him, you know, which you, you talked about a little bit before. And I think man to man coverage too. And if whenever he's tasked with that, uh, either not getting too grabby or, you know, uh, you know, beating guys at the catch point, which we have seen this preseason. I mean, he has the interception this preseason, uh, the one, you know, even the one hand, the one in the end zone that doesn't count technically. Um, We've seen some man-to-man stuff. The Sam Laporta play against the Lions was really cool where he kind of got that pass pass deflection. So we'll see. I'm really excited for Jason Pinnock. According to a pro football reference, not a single missed tackle, but according to pro Pro football focus, he had a 13% missed tackle rate. So pick your poison. All right, we will be back with another podcast tomorrow. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you then. Until then, let's go Big Blue.